Today I'm going to be showing you how to do pinch detection with the new input system for mobile devices. So right here you can see that when we pinch in, the square will start to move towards the screen because we're zooming in. And when we pinch out, you'll see that the square is zooming out. So the camera is moving away from the square, meaning we're zooming out of the scene. So let's get started. So the first thing that you want to make sure to do is have it installed, the input system. So go to Window Package Manager and under Unity Registry, search Input System. And make sure you have this installed. Right here it'll say Install and just click Yes when the pop-up comes up. And once you have that installed, I'm going to make a new scripts folder here. And in this folder, I'm going to right click and create a new input action. And I'm just going to call this touch controls. All right. And then for our input asset, we want an action map. So let's just call this touch. And this is just a set of controls. Our actions are our controls. For our actions or our controls, we want several things. So the main way we'll be doing pinch detection is by tracking the position of the two fingers. And as they get nearer to each other, that means we're pinching in. But as they get further away from each other, that means we're pinching out. And we're going to be keeping track of the distance. So if the distance is getting larger, that means our fingers are moving away from each other. And if it's getting shorter, the distance, that means our fingers are moving towards each other. So we can start with that. So first we want the primary finger position. So this is the first finger that touches the screen, the position of that one. And then we want the secondary finger position. And finally, we want an action to tell us when that second finger has touched the screen. Because when it has touched the screen, that means we can start our detection algorithm to see if our fingers are getting closer or further apart. And we only need to keep track of the second finger because once we press down with the second finger, we can assume that, of course, the first finger has already been pressed down. So secondary touch contact, we can call it. For that one, we can just select the action type for button because it'll be kind of like a button and you can add an interaction if you'd like. Press is a good interaction so we're pressing on the screen and you can do it either press only, release only, and press and release. So I'm just going to do it on press down and then for the binding we can go to path and then we can go to touch screen and then we can go to our second contact which is touch number one because the index starts from zero so this is the primary finger and this is going to be the second finger that touches the screen. Let's just select touch contact which will return a boolean if something has touched the screen, if it's in contact with the screen. For our primary finger position, we can change the action type to either pass through or value. I usually always pick pass through, but I've seen some people having difficulty with pass through and once they select value, they found that it worked for them. And one big difference I saw in the documentation is that pass through action will not use the started or canceled callbacks except when you've binded an interaction to them. So maybe that was the issue that people were experiencing. And if you want to read more about it, I'll link this documentation down in the description. So I'm just going to go with value in this case. But yeah, if you'd like to learn more about this, I have several other videos on the input system that I'll link the whole playlist in the description. For the control type, let's go with vector2 because our position is an x and a y value. And then for the binding, we can go to touch screen and we can go to touch number zero and click position. For the secondary finger, it's the same process, value, vector2. Open it up, under no binding, go to touch number one and press position. Now we can save our asset. All right, so now that we have our input action, let's generate a C-sharp class and click apply. Next, let's create a new C-sharp script and let's call this pinch detection. And so if we open that up, you'll see that we have our empty file here and touch controls is just our list of controls that we made. So I'm just gonna erase this and I'm gonna erase this generic using statement. And so we want to make a new instance of touch controls so that we can read the values that we just made. So we can say private touch controls. Let me just zoom in here and I can just call this controls. Let's have an awake function where we instantiate it. Controls equals new touch controls. Then we have to enable our input on enable controls dot enable. Then we have to disable our input controls dot disable. This is called when the script is enabled and this is called when the script is disabled. And then we can have our start function here. And so for our start function, we want to track when we've pressed down with the second finger. And we also want to track when we've stopped pressing down on that second finger. So we can say controls dot touch dot secondary touch contact dot started. So once we've started our action and I'm just going to use the syntax here, which is subscribing to an event, but also not wanting to get the parameter that the event is passing in. That's what the underscore is for. 
So we don't really have to pass in anything to our function. We just want to know whether it's started or not. And we can just call pinch start. And maybe pinching isn't the best name because that implies that your fingers are moving towards each other. So maybe zooming might have been a better name. So I'm just going to say zoom start here. And I'm just going to copy that. And instead of started, I'll put canceled, which is when our finger lifts. And it's going to be zoom end. I'm going to make those functions private void zoom start. And then private void zoom end. So when we start to zoom, we want to keep track on every frame what our fingers are doing. And so I think the best way of doing that is a coroutine. So we don't have to populate our update function with a bunch of stuff. So let's make a coroutine right here, i.e. numerable. And then we can say zoom detection. And so a coroutine, this is a coroutine, basically stops execution of the function depending on your conditions that you put in it. But it's also a great way to keep your update function uncluttered by doing a while loop inside of it so we're going to start this coroutine and let's keep track of that coroutine. So private coroutine, zoom coroutine. And then when we start our zoom, we can say start coroutine. We can call our function zoom detection. And we can equal that to our zoom coroutine here. I misspelled it. And then on the zoom end, we can just say stop coroutine and pass in our coroutine that we previously stored. Ah, and here it's giving us an error, and that's because I actually misspelled this. It's IE numerator, not IE numerable. So make sure you spell that correctly. And then here we can actually start our algorithm. So we're going to want to keep track of the previous position of our fingers and compare them to the current position. So we want to compare the previous distance to our current distance, so we can just keep track of it with a float. Previous distance equals zero. And here we can also just declare our current distance. And now we'll want to do a while loop. So while true. So this will just keep on going forever until, of course, we lift our finger and that will stop the coroutine here. So now let's set the distance. So distance equals vector two dot distance. And we want to pass in our current finger, which is controls dot touch dot primary finger position. And let's pass in controls dot touch dot secondary finger position. Let me just organize this a little better. And for the primary position, we actually have to read our value. So read value vector two, or else we can't get the value. And same with this one, read value vector two. All right, and then down here, I'm just gonna set the previous distance equal to the current distance. But that'll be after we do all of our processing here. So here's the detection. All right, so now we can check if the distance is greater than the previous distance, that means we are zooming out. Else if our distance is less than the previous distance, then we are zooming in. And if you're asking why I just didn't do an else, because if we're not currently moving our fingers, then that means it's stopped. So we're not either zooming in or zooming out. If we did an else statement, it would also include the fingers being stopped, which I didn't want. I want to make sure that the distance between them is increasing. And so this is a pretty simple way of detection. If you wanted to take it one step further, you can figure out if they are going in the same direction. So if your fingers are traveling towards each other or away from each other via the dot product, which returns one if they are traveling the same direction and returns negative one if they're traveling in opposite directions. And you can use that in combination with this to further your accuracy of the detection. However, I think this is really all that you need. But if you did want a hint on how to do that, then you'd need a vector three dot product or a vector two dot product between the deltas of your fingers. So your deltas are the change in position, basically the direction they're moving in. So if they're moving in an opposite way from each other, that means that we're either zooming in or zooming out. And so it should be negative one if you are moving in opposite directions, but we want to have a slight threshold so we can do, if it's less than 0.9, that means that it's a pretty good chance that we are zooming in or out. All right, so now we have this code set up. So let's actually zoom in and out or pinch in and out. And for that, we need a reference to our camera, which I'll just actually get a reference to the transform of the camera. Camera transform, since that's what we'll be changing. And we can say camera transform equals camera.main.transform. 
and make sure that your camera is tagged as main for this to work. And so we want to keep a reference so we don't have to keep doing camera.main. All right, and now one other thing that we need is our speed. So private float speed, we need to set that to four. So this is the speed at which the camera moves. I'm gonna put a serialized field so we can change it in the inspector. So I can do camera speed here. All right, so here we're zooming out so we can do a camera transform dot position. So we're setting the new position equals vector three dot slurp. And we're doing vector three because the position is a vector three. We take in the current position. So we're going from the current position to a new position, which I think we can just declare it here, vector two target position. And we can equal it to the current position because we want to start from the current position and move. All right, since we are zooming out, and this is gonna have to be a vector three since it's gonna get converted to a vector three anyways. If we go into our scene, you see that the blue arrow of the camera is the way it's pointing right now. So if we move inward towards that blue arrow, you'll see that the Z axis gets higher. So to zoom out, we move the blue arrow backwards and that means that the number gets lower, meaning that we'll have to subtract the Z axis. So target position dot Z, we can do minus equals one. So we're just going backwards. And then we can just pass in our target position here. And for the slurp, we can add in the speed, but first we need the time dot delta time. And then we can do times camera speed. And so this is very similar to the other one. I can just copy it for the zoom in, but instead of minus equals one, we do plus equals one. All right, and then we must not forget for a curatine, on each frame of the curatine, we have to make sure if we're in a while loop like this, we have to make sure to do yield return null so that it waits until the next frame to continue this execution. Because if not, it'll just execute this a bunch of times and it'll go crazy. So make sure you have the yield return null down here. And so before we actually build it to our phone, let's actually right click and create a cube here. And let's make sure that our camera is in view for this cube. So I'm just gonna put it where the cube is kind of centered here. So this is how we'll just find out if we're actually zooming in or not. So the cube will get bigger if it zooms in. If you are using orthographic, which is 2D mode. So if you're in 2D mode, you can do camera.main, of course, storing the camera main, orthographic size, which is the size of the camera. So a bigger value means that you are more zoomed out, while a smaller value means that you are more zoomed in. So for zooming in, you can just do minus minus. Of course, you'd want to slurp to this value and the same for the other one. Instead of minus minus, you want to increase that orthographic size value. But I'm just gonna set mine to perspective so I can just show you all that it works. And last but not least, just add in empty game objects, call it pinch detection, and add in the script we just made. All right, and then unfortunately, since we're using two fingers, we can't really test this in the editor since testing is more for one finger and you can use your mouse to simulate the finger, so we'll have to build it to the phone. Unity does have a render streaming package that you can stream to your phone. However, I have not tried that out yet, but I will be trying it out and making sure to update y'all if this is a viable way to use the new input system for testing because Unity Remote does not work. All right, so go to File Build Settings, and if you haven't watched my previous video on Touch, then make sure to do so because I show you a more general overview of the new input system with Touch and also how to build to your phone and how to set it up. So I have my scene added here. I'm gonna switch to Android. All right, and now here under Run Device, you should see your device. Make sure you have it on and connected to the computer. All right, so now if I refresh, my device is here. And to avoid setting up a key, we can actually just click development build here. We can select build and run. I'm gonna right click and create a new builds folder and save it here. I'm gonna call it zoom detection. Press enter to save it and it will now build it to your phone. All right, so you see when we build the game and now if I put one finger on the screen, nothing happens. However, if I put two and I start moving, then if I move my fingers closer to each other, it zooms in. And if I move them further apart, it starts to zoom out. I found that the speed might be a little slow. So if you'd like, you can increase the speed. You can also put a threshold if you'd like. So if the current distance minus the previous distance is greater than a certain value or threshold, then you can move. So this might combat sometimes the small finger jitters that one might have when moving on a screen. 
But yeah, that's the basics of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I'd like to thank all my patrons and subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me and my previous video, which was a Q&A and face reveal, was awesome and I got a lot of nice comments. So thank you. And so, of course, I want to thank my patrons so much because their support means a lot to me and they really help me continue making these quality videos. So with that, I'd like to thank my new patrons in the supporter tier. And in the enthusiastic tier, I'd like to thank Beardy and EKRTGL. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And if you're interested, the link is in the description. I offer source code, early access to my videos, and an exclusive Discord channel. And I'll also be starting to work on a game, so I'll post more progress on my game for the dedicated tier as well. And if you haven't already, make sure to join our Discord channel where you can ask questions, post memes, or just chat. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.